In this video, I will give you a basic understanding of the step-down power transformer. This will include the proper placement of the fuse and fuse holder, how to measure the secondary voltages with a digital multimeter, and how to test the transformer using your ohmmeter. So let's get started. All of these transformers will do exactly the same thing. As the transformer gets bigger, the output current gets larger. For this small transformer, it has a 25 volt center tap winding and it can only deliver up to 0.3 amps. The center tap is nothing more than a wire soldered right to the very middle of the secondary winding. This transformer is a little wee bit bigger and you'll notice it's going to be able to have a maximum current draw of 0.5 amps. The next one is 1 amp and you can see it's getting a little wee bit bigger. And this very last one it's going to be a 2 amp transformer. All of them will deliver the same secondary voltage. Now all of those transformers were North American transformers. Here's an offshore transformer and it's saying that we've got a center tap output and we have a 2 amp current rating on the secondary. But notice how much smaller it is. Here I have a 1 amp transformer and it's even larger than the 2 amp offshore transformer. Here this is a true 2 amp transformer. Look how much bigger it is compared to this 2 amp transformer. So what's up with that? I suspect that this offshore transformer is overrated. So be careful with the type of transformer that you're going to use for your electronic project. To protect your transformer you're going to need a fuse and something to put the fuse into and that would be called a fuse holder. To properly protect the transformer we need to fuse the hot wire. That would be the black wire on this particular power cord. Now there's going to be two ways that we can wire this up to the fuse holder. The correct way and your other option is incorrect. So let's take a look at the correct method of wiring this up to the fuse holder. Here I have the glass fuse inserted into the fuse cap. It fits in quite snugly and then we will push this into the fuse holder and start turning clockwise to tighten it up into the fuse holder. But let's, before we do any of that, let's talk about the proper way of wiring the fuse holder. Inside the fuse holder we have two connection points. This metal tab here is actually connected to this outer ring right here. That outer ring connects to this part on the fuse cap connecting this side of the fuse to our power source. This end of the fuse will get connected to this conductor right here. This conductor is spring-loaded on the inside of the fuse holder and it's a round metal disc that sits just around here. Everything else in between is all plastic and there will be no connection between this connector and this connector. The only connection that is going to be made is through the fuse as long as it's not blown. This conductor is spring-loaded. Inside the housing of the fuse holder there will be a disc, round disc right here and then a spring between that disc and the end of the housing. Watch how I pull on this and it always retracts back to its resting position. Let's put the fuse in and see how far it actually pushes out. With the fuse inserted into the fuse holder and fully screwed in, you'll notice this conductor now is pushed out. To 
connect the power cord properly to the fuse holder, the hot wire will always be connected to the end conductor on the fuse holder. If we connect the hot wire coming from the power cord to this conductor, we could expose ourselves to an electrical hazard, and I'll show you why. So what will happen when the hot wire from the power cord is connected to this end of the fuse holder? As I remove the fuse holder from, or the fuse from the fuse holder, my fingers could be touching the end of the fuse. And if the fuse is good, this end of the fuse could be touching this outer ring where the fuse cap screws into and I could be exposing myself to a shock hazard which is extremely dangerous so do not do that please always connect the power cord hot wire to the end of the fuse holder now you're probably wondering which wires to connect to the AC line and to the fuse holder so on this side you'll see we've got the part number for the transformer it's saying this is the primary and it's 115 volts 60 cycles and we've got two black wires coming out if I flip the transformer over you see that it says this is the secondary 25 volt center tap with a maximum current of 0.3 amps so this is a secondary, so that's going to be my output side. My primary will be going towards the AC. You'll notice both wires are black, so I can, there's no polarity in terms of hooking it up to the fuse holder and to the neutral wire. Let's do that. I connected the one black wire from the primary side to the neutral or white wire in this particular case. The hot wire from the power cord is connected to the end of the fuse holder. The output of the fuse holder gets connected to the second primary winding. By making the connections as I described, as I pull the fuse out, I lose the terminal connection from the hot wire on the power cord immediately because the spring now has been retracted and I can pull a fuse out safely without exposing myself to a shock hazard. Now you're probably wondering what to do with this green wire or the wire that is actually connected to earth ground. That will be connected to a nut and bolt all by itself, not attached to anything else, to the base of the metal chassis. If you don't have a metal chassis and it's a plastic chassis, you could cut this wire off. Now, if you're only going to run this to the transformer and have the transformer loose, you could connect it to one of the screw holes in the base of the transformer. So let's now wire up the secondary of the transformer and you'll notice that we have three wires coming out of the secondary. One wire will be the center tap which is attached to the exact middle point of the secondary winding. Now we'll take a close look and you'll see two wires are completely solid colored and green and the middle wire has a little yellow stripe going through it. That odd colored wire is the center tap wire. The outside of the winding will be the two solid colored wires right here. This is where we'll measure our 25 volts RMS. Now if we want to measure from the center tap, then I can connect to one outer winding and I'll measure 12 and a half volts RMS and if I go to the other outer winding I will also measure 12 and a half volts RMS. RMS is root mean squared and you must have your digital multimeter set to the AC function to do this. If it's set to DC your digital multimeter will read zero volts. 
If you have the transformer properly fused for the rating of the transformer, and should one of these wires touch each other, then the fuse will blow in the primary side. So I always suggest that you tape the secondary windings, like I have, to the workbench to prevent them from touching each other and blowing the fuse. So let's measure the secondary voltage and we're going to see something very interesting when we do that. So to start with I'm going to make sure my digital multimeter is set to measure AC volts and right now I'm going to leave my meter on auto ranging. So now let's connect the digital multimeter leads to the outside winding wires. Careful not to short them out and polarity does not matter because this is an AC voltage. You'll see I've got 29.3 volts AC. Well gee, I thought this was a 25 volt transformer. What's up with that? Well actually, the reason that we're measuring a little bit higher voltage is that this is a no load voltage. Remember now, our transformer has a current rating. In the transformers that I showed you, we had anything from 0.3 amps to 2 amps. So, depending on how much current I will draw, there's a little wee bit of resistance in the secondary winding. So, I times R will create a voltage drop in the secondary winding, creating a much lower voltage, which will be usually close to the rated voltage on the secondary winding. So in other words, I need to draw some current before I can get the voltage close to 25 volts. Now let's measure the voltage from the center tap to one of the outer windings. So I'm going to move this black lead over to the center tap wire. And you'll notice that I'm measuring 14.63 volts AC. When I go to that one, Let's move it to the other side of the secondary winding and I'm measuring 14.66 volts. So if I take those two numbers and add them together I should get pretty close to my full voltage 29.3 volts on the secondary. Again these are open circuit voltages. Now if you happen to mess up and set your digital multimeter to DC volts, you can see here I've done that and I'm not measuring a whole lot of voltage and you'll wonder what's up with that. So you can see there from the center tap to the outer winding at zero, across the entire secondary winding is zero. If I flip it back to AC, you can see I'm measuring the open circuit voltage of the transformer. So always make sure you're measuring your secondary voltage set to AC. How do we know if a transformer is any good? Well, one quick test is to measure the resistance of the windings. I have my digital multimeter set to the ohms function. It's also auto-ranging, so it's going to select the best range for the resistance measured. Now, let's test the resistance of the windings of my transformer. But gee, you better make sure that you're not connected to power or you're going to cause problems with your digital multimeter. Before I make any resistance measurements, it's probably a good idea to get a base resistance on my digital multimeter. So I've connected my two meter leads together. You can see here I'm getting almost 0 ohms, 0.1 ohm. That's telling me my digital multimeter leads are in perfect working order. Now let's measure the resistance of the primary winding. So we'll carefully connect to the two black wires on the primary side of the transformer. And here we have about 15.9 ohms on the primary side of the transformer. That doesn't look too bad. Now let's measure the resistance on the secondary side. To start with, I'm going to measure the resistance of the entire secondary winding. So I'm going across both solid colored wires. And I am getting 
1.5, 1.6, it's trying to stay at the 1.6 ohms. That's a very low resistance. So that's telling me I've got a very heavy gauge or a heavier gauge wire in the secondary side of the transformer than I do in the primary side. Now let's measure the resistance from the center tap to one of the outside winding wires. Here I'm getting about 0.9 ohms and then on this side Point 0.8 ohms. So it, we add those two resistances together. We sh are getting about 1.6 ohms. What did we get when we went across the entire thing? 1.6 ohms. So we know that the secondary winding is in good working order. Now if you ever think of working a transformer without a fuse and you happen to short the secondary, you're going to cause some problems. The wires or the transformer will get very hot, possibly melting the protective coating on the wires, causing a short. Now you'll notice that the resistance measurements were very low on the secondary winding. Don't be fooled by that low resistance. If the winding was short, we would measure zero ohms. So you would have then a bad transformer. So make sure you calibrate your digital multimeter before making a resistance measurement and using the best possible range for making that measurement.